Hey gang, welcome to your 14th OAuth tutorial and I thought this was a good point just to have a quick review of the whole signing process so far. Alright then, so I thought this was a good point just to pause and take a sidestep and just go over what we've covered so far and the different stages that we've had to go through using Passport along the way to sign a user in. Because I think if we just carry on coding then we kind of lose the big picture and we lose where we're up to. We get lost in the code and nothing has any kind of logical progression anymore. So I want to use this video to explain everything we've done so far and how this diagram mirrors to our code. So which part of the code we're using at which part in the diagram we're in. So if you feel you already have a really good grasp and you don't need this refresher, feel free to skip this lesson and go on to the next one because I'm not going to go over anything new just consolidating everything we've learned so far so that hopefully everything falls into place. Okay, so it all starts in the browser. If we go to the home page, we're on our application and we want to log in. So we go to the login page, which is forward slash auth forward slash login. And we show this template right here. Remember, in our auth routes, we have this forward slash login route handler, which renders this login page. So that's what we're seeing here. And the idea is, is that we have an application where users can log in using various different providers. So Google is just one of those, but if we had Facebook, we'd list that as an option. GitHub would list that as an option. So they can log in from this page using any one of those providers. Now we've only set up Google. And if we click on this, then it would go to forward slash auth forward slash Google, right? If it was Facebook, it would go to forward slash Facebook github forward slash github so right now we've set up a route handler for forward slash auth forward slash google because then they've clicked that button and they're telling us they want to log in with google right so that's that first step here they're logging it in with google they're clicking that button and we have that handler right here for this route forward slash auth forward slash google it's in the auth routes file so it's this one right here and at this point we know they want to authenticate with Google. So we say, okay, well, instead of us personally interacting with the Google servers, I'm gonna hand control to Passport. That's what you're there to do, to help us along the way. And that's the first point that you're gonna kick in and take control, okay? So they click on that button and Passport says, okay, you want to authenticate with Google. So therefore I'm gonna communicate with the Google servers for you, all right? And we've said right here, Google. Now. We had to set up Passport so that it can use the Google strategy to log in, right? So we can't just call this right here without setting up Passport in the first place. So we did that. So this is the Passport setup file and we installed Passport and the Google strategy. And we said we want to use on Passport a new Google strategy. And we had to set up an online project um, to gain access to our client ID and our client secret. This is what lets our application and Passport interact with the Google Plus API and allow that interaction between Passport and Google to sign users in and retrieve information. We needed this, okay? So we set up Passport with those two different properties right there so that Passport could do this kind of stuff. It could say, okay, use the Google strategy to authenticate someone. And this is what we wanna retrieve from that person's profile, the profile information. OK, that's the scope. So as soon as a user clicks on that Google Plus button and goes to this route, then Passport is taking over and it's going to communicate using our Google strategy and our client IDs and secrets with Google. OK, it does that and it forwards them on the user to that signing page, that permissions page to say, look, this application wants your information, your Google Plus profile information. OK, and they can choose to sign in with their Google account then. So when that happens, we said in our Google project and also in the setup over here, when they click allow or when they click to sign in with one of their um, IDs, their Google profiles, this is where we want to redirect them to, the callback URL, okay? So once they've clicked on their account to log in with Google, they're redirected to this route right here. So over in the diagram, we've gone here, Passport has taken control and communi communicated with Google They've granted us permission and logged in and they go back to this redirect URI, okay? This callback URL. And this is handled on our server. And it's right here, this one, 
forward slash Google forward slash redirect. So they're coming back after they've logged in to this particular route. Now, at this point, they come back with a code, a unique code in the URL that Google has provided us with to say, OK, this is the code that you need to use if you want to get information from that user's profile because they've allowed you to do that. So at this point, we say, OK, well, I don't know what to do with that code. So I'm going to let Passport take over again. And we're going to say Passport.Authenticate using the Google strategy once again, much like we did up here. But this time, Passport says, well, actually, I can see in the URL that code that Google has provided us with. So I'm going to take that code and I'm going to retrieve some information from Google, OK, and return that profile information. So that's this step right down here to come back to the URI, the redirect URI with that code and Passport takes over once again in this redirect URI. OK, right here. And it goes out and it retrieves information from Google using that code. So Google exchanges that code for their profile information. And then Passport brings that profile information back to us. OK, so at this point right here, when it brings back the information, we're still in this section, right? But if we dig deep at that point where the information comes back to us, we don't carry on just yet to this. We're still within this. At that point, the passport callback function right here fires. OK, so we retrieve that information. The callback function fires and we're saying, OK, well, now we have access to that profile that you've returned to us. So we want to take that profile and check if this user has been to us before. If they have and I can find their Google ID, their profile ID in our database, then what I'm going to do is not create a new record in my database. I'm going to just retrieve that user. OK, because I might have extra information about that user that I've stored pertaining to my application. So I'll retrieve it. If it can't find that, then instead what we'll do is create a new user based on that Google user that's just signed in. They've signed in for the first time. We can't find their record. Therefore, we'll create a new user and we'll take the profile information that comes back here. We'll take their username from it or their display name, their Google ID, and we'll store that, save it in our database. And when we've saved it, we retrieve that record that we've saved back. OK, likewise, if there is a current record, we'll retrieve it back. So at this stage, after this bit of code is run here, in this callback function, we now have our own version of that user, whether it's a new one, a new record for a new user or an existing one when they've been to us before. And that's the point that we're at at the minute. We're right here. OK, so the next step is to say, OK, well, we have this user now. We can tell that this person is logged in and they have a record now on our own database. And now what we want to do is say to the browser, OK, this user is logged in. Right. So if they now want to request a page which requires them to be authenticated, that's fine. They can view that page because they're logged in, such as their profile page. Right. So what we need to do is somehow get some information from this record that's retrieved. Right. And take that identifying information and stuff it into a unique cookie. Send that to the browser so that then when the browser retrieves that cookie, if it makes a subsequent request to, for example, their profile page, they're going to send that cookie back to us on the server. And on the server, we can take that cookie, decode it and say, OK, well, that cookie says that you're this person that logged in before. Therefore, I'm going to allow you to see your profile page and I'm going to send you your profile page. Does that make sense? So that's where we are at the minute. And I thought I just wanted to walk through in fine detail what's going on at each step and refer to the code that mirrors up to each step here. So I hope everything makes sense to you now. And in the next video, we're going to go on to this step right here where we're starting to serialize our user, take a piece of information from our own user and then create a cookie from it. So that's the step we're on and we're going to tackle that in the very next video.